I, I guess I have more than a few comments, so forgive me, it's a bit long. Um, this report is painful to read, um, and it's infuriating. Um, it documents an appalling and, sorry, and persistent breach of trust on the part of Portland Public Schools for 32 years, a child predator harassed, intimidated, and exploited young women, and we allowed it to happen. Let that sink in. PPS allowed it to happen. As this exhaustive investigation shows, the district and countless individuals in it failed to recognize the warning signs of Mitch Whitehurst's pattern of sexual misconduct. As he moved from school to school, Student complaints were routinely dismissed or downplayed by adults in authority. Even when presented with allegations of gross misconduct, adults repeatedly failed to investigate or intervene to protect students. And as a result, students were harmed repeatedly. This investigation has uncovered strong evidence that some students were sexually exploited while in our care. Other students were subjected to prolonged or episodic harassment. Many more students witnessed or heard about the menacing and abusive behavior. All of these students were harmed. Any abuse of, of children is unacceptable, but experiencing sexual abuse or the threat of sexual abuse especially at the hands of an adult in a position of trust and authority, has devastating effects on children. Those effects often are lifelong and can echo through many generations. The stakes don't get any higher than this. We owe these students and their families not only an apology for our past failures, but also an unshakable commitment to action so that this systemic dereliction of duty never happens again. This report makes it clear that a profoundly dysfunctional system severely hampered the ability of individuals to connect the dots and stop the abuse. While reading this report, what struck me was that this case may be the quintessential example of how persistent dysfunction in PPS has impacted children. For decades, many of us have complained that, C that PPS was a system with no system, uh, a system with no systems. Everybody was in charge, nobody was in charge. A decentralized organization presided over by a disengaged, rudderless leadership that was more intent on hiding problems than solving them created the conditions in which a Mitch, Mitch, uh, Mitch Whitehurst or a Norm Scott could not only exist but thrive. As a current board member, perhaps the most disturbing thing in, is, in this report is the evidence of a broken organizational culture. There is no smoking gun here. There were individuals who demonstrably failed to do their jobs, but the investigators noted that most people actually did do their jobs, just very narrowly defined. They complied with legal mandates and they followed bureaucratic procedures. They did what they were supposed to do, but not one thing more. Assuming, apparently, that somebody else would do something to stop it. No one did for 32 years. What's missing in the reported testimony from those involved in this case is any real sense of individual responsibility for the well-being of the children we serve. Yes, it's true there were very few systems of accountability in PPS, but accountability is after the fact. To protect children, we need an organizational culture that is founded on a bedrock commitment to serve the best interests of children, even, maybe especially, when that makes adults uncomfortable. Every day, families entrust more than 49,000 children to PPS. At a very minimum, they have a right to expect that their children are safe from harm while in our care. As this report shows, too often we fail to meet that minimum standard. Schools should be a safe haven, a nurturing place that allows children to learn and thrive. If children do not feel safe, nothing else matters. Every single person in this organization must understand that he or she has a personal responsibility 
to ensure the well-being of every student every day. PPS exists to serve children. It does not exist to serve adults. But for far too long, PPS has functioned primarily to promote the interests of adults, too often at the expense of children. That stops now. That must stop now. Our new superintendent, Guadalupe Guerrero, is committed to working with this board, employees, parents, and community members to transform Portland Public Schools. But changing organizational culture is notoriously difficult, so all of us have to share the responsibility to focus our energy and our imagination on doing things differently. Child abuse is not exclusive to PPS, but we have to take responsibility for our part in ignoring and perpetuating it and stopping it. This report offers many excellent suggestions for changes in policy and practice in PPS and other systems that will enhance our ability to protect children. I, speak for, I think I speak for all of us in this new administration when I say that we intend to pursue, these, uh, to pursue changes diligently and quickly. However, bureaucratic reform will mean nothing if we don't change the organizational culture of PPS from being adult-focused to being child-focused. I'm confident that the overwhelming majority of PPS educators and staff at all levels work their hearts out every day to do right by kids. But we cannot deny that bad people exist and it only takes one to ruin many lives. A famous bank robber, Willie Sutton, was once asked why he robbed banks. He said simply, because that's where the money is. Predators seek out schools because that's where the children are. It is our individual and collective responsibility to remain vigilant. Not paranoid, but vigilant. I want to thank the many students who had the courage to speak up now and in the past. I'm sorry you weren't listened to. I want to thank Bethany Bonds for uncovering the story. She's done a great service to this district and its children by giving PPS this opportunity to do better. I want to thank the investigators who produced this excellent report. I look forward to working with the superintendent, our employees, our students, and our families toward a common goal of creating a unified, collaborative, effective organization dedicated to helping children reach their fullest potential. I just have a, a few comments um, about the situation. Um, and, and once again, really appreciate the depth of your work here and the many thoughtful um, recommendations that um, we will um, pursue then. So children um, should, in our system and in any system, should not need to just survive school. Um, child and sexual abuse are often silent crimes. We know that. But this that was not the case here. Uh, many courageous young women came forward and reported this abuse, but tragically, no one took them seriously enough to do that follow through that, um, as you discussed. Um, so a thorough a thorough investigation such as the one we received today should not come after decades of reporting um, and of rumors and allegations. Um, I know this is too little too late, and we will do better. So this is a wake-up call for all of us. So I'm going to talk about what every stakeholder in our community can do. So students, here's what you can do. Report any behavior or communication that makes you feel uncomfortable, and if you don't feel heard, Report it to someone else until you do feel heard and until somebody takes you seriously. And no, you are not to blame. We're here to keep you safe and to provide a secure place for you to learn. That's our duty and our moral obligation. Um, and what educators can do. Um, so often, you know, when you report, it was clear that educators thought that somebody else um, was going to follow through or that, um, and then also they thought that maybe something was going on, but they didn't want to be responsible for taking down a colleague or ruining their life. Um, and, um, but we're charged with protecting the lives of our children. So we have to commit, as everyone in our system, to reporting all incidents and being diligent in observations of questionable or creepy behavior. 90% of sexual abuse fiction, uh, victims know their abuser. And only 4 to 8% of child sexual abuse reports are fabricated, a very small percentage. So we have to believe what we're hearing and um, that there are 10% and increasing 
um, students who were victims of sexual misconduct in our schools. Now, again, we know that um, the vast majority of teachers are wonderful, dedicated, talented teachers, and we are immensely blessed with those in Portland Public Schools. Um, and it's one thing to say that we um, protect children, but it's another thing to do so. So I commit that we will work to making these changes immediately so that we can ensure this. So thank you. As Portland Public Schools relatively new superintendent, um, as a parent, um, I'm frankly appalled. Um, I'm deeply disturbed and upset by the findings in this report. Um, I also want to thank the investigators for your thorough report, your findings, and your recommendations. It demonstrates without argument failures at every level of the organization that resulted in students, in children, being harmed. And that is unacceptable to me. And it should be to everyone who works in this district. In my, for, in my short time here in Portland, I've begun to observe that we are a district full of educators and administrators who are passionate about their work, who are deeply committed to our students placed in our care, and I'll continue to applaud our outstanding educators and leaders and remain committed to supporting their work and educating all of our students. But this report shows that we have to do more much more to ensure that those students we care so much about are kept safe. We must do everything we can to ensure our systems and processes for reporting, investigating, and taking action have the necessary integrity and oversight to prevent something like this from happening ever again. We need to take a hard look at our internal structures and critically examine our practices against the findings of this investigation. You can count on my administration working with the board to take steps that will restore parents' trust that their students will be safe when they are in our schools, when they are under our care. The report outlines a number of reasonable, workable recommendations for the district, which we will study closely and where we can adopt quickly. I invite and hope to work closely with the Portland Association of Teachers and our other employee unions to ensure nothing in our labor agreements allow problems such as the ones addressed in this report to fall through the cracks. My thoughts this evening are with those students and families who have been hurt, whose trust we have shaken because of institutional failures over the course of three decades. We owe those who have bravely come forward a commitment to do much, much better, to do things right. And it's my intention to make sure that we deliver on that pledge.